Did you know that nearly one in three births in the United States are delivered by cesarean section? This surgical procedure, commonly referred to as a C-section, involves delivering a baby through incisions made in the abdomen and uterus. Globally, the rates of cesarean sections have been rising, making it one of the most common surgeries performed worldwide. Understanding why cesarean sections are performed is essential. For healthcare professionals, it involves recognizing both the medical and non-medical factors that lead to the decision of a cesarean over a vaginal birth. For expectant parents, this knowledge can demystify the process and help manage expectations. The reasons range from emergency situations, like fetal distress, to planned surgeries due to previous medical history. In some regions, socioeconomic factors and patient preference also play a significant role in these increasing rates. With such significant numbers, it's crucial to dive deep into why, how, and when cesarean sections are performed. So what exactly is a cesarean section? A cesarean section, often abbreviated as C-section, is a surgical procedure used to deliver a baby through incisions made in the abdomen and uterus. This method is typically employed when a vaginal delivery would put the baby or mother at risk. Several circumstances might necessitate a C-section. For starters, situations involving distress for the baby, such as an abnormal heart rate, could prompt this procedure. Other factors include labor that doesn't progress, unusual positioning of the baby-like breech, or health concerns in the mother, such as hypertension or diabetes. Additionally, a C-section might be planned if a mother has had a previous cesarean, as it can sometimes be risky to attempt a vaginal birth after a cesarean. The procedure itself involves several key steps. First, the abdomen is cleaned and prepped. A local or regional anesthesia is administered to numb the lower half of the body, ensuring the mother is awake but pain-free. A horizontal incision is then made just above the pubic hairline. Through this incision, the doctor will reach the uterus, making a careful incision there as well to deliver the baby. Once the baby is delivered, the uterus and initial abdominal incision are closed with stitches. Understanding the nuances of a cesarean section helps demystify one of the most common surgical operations worldwide. Now that we know what a C-section is, let's explore why they are becoming more common. Why are more women undergoing cesarean deliveries than ever before? This question brings us to the heart of a complex interplay of medical, personal, and systemic factors. Let's delve into the reasons behind the rising rates of cesarean sections, commonly known as C-sections. Firstly, there are two primary types of C-sections, elective and emergency. Elective C-sections are planned ahead of time, often not for immediate medical reasons, but due to personal preference or anticipated complications. On the other hand, emergency C-sections occur when unforeseen complications arise during labor, necessitating swift action to ensure the safety of both mother and child. One of the most common medical reasons for a cesarean delivery is fetal distress. This occurs when the fetus is not receiving enough oxygen or the heart rate shows worrying patterns during labor. In such scenarios, a prompt C-section can be life-saving. Prolonged labor is another significant factor. Sometimes labor does not progress as expected, which can pose risks to both the mother and the baby. In cases where labor stalls for too long without any signs of progress, a C-section becomes the safer option to prevent potential complications such as infection or severe birth trauma. Another scenario is the breech position, where the baby is positioned feet first instead of head first close to the due date. This positioning increases the risk of complications during a vaginal birth, making a C-section a safer alternative. Additionally, advancements in medical technology and shifts in healthcare policies have influenced C-section rates. With better surgical techniques and enhanced safety protocols, cesarean deliveries have become more accessible and safer, leading some healthcare providers and expectant mothers to opt for a C-section, sometimes even in non-critical situations. Moreover, societal factors and healthcare policies, including how hospitals manage labor and delivery, also play a role. In some regions, there is a higher inclination towards scheduling deliveries for convenience or liability concerns, which can increase the number of elective C-sections. Understanding these reasons helps in anticipating and preparing for a cesarean section. As we navigate these complexities, the decision always aims to prioritize the health and safety of both mother and child. Let's walk through a cesarean section step by step. The journey of a cesarean section begins long before the first incision is made. Preparation is key. Upon deciding that a cesarean is necessary, 
the healthcare team springs into action. The mother's medical history is reviewed and blood tests are conducted to ensure there are no conditions that could complicate the surgery. She is then prepped for the procedure, which includes fasting for several hours to reduce the risk of aspiration during anesthesia. Speaking of anesthesia, it's a crucial part of the cesarean process. Most commonly, regional anesthesia is used, which can either be an epidural or a spinal block. This numbs the lower half of the body but keeps the mother awake and alert, allowing her to witness the momentous first seconds of her baby's life. An anesthesiologist remains by her side, monitoring her vital signs and ensuring her comfort throughout the procedure. Now on to the surgical process itself. The surgeon makes a careful incision, usually just above the bikini line. This incision goes through the skin and abdominal wall. The muscles in the area are moved aside, not cut, to reach the uterus. Another incision is made in the uterus through which the baby is gently lifted out. It's a moment of orchestrated precision where every move is calculated and exact. After the baby is delivered, the placenta is removed and the incisions are closed with stitches that typically dissolve on their own during recovery. The focus then shifts to post-operative care. This phase is critical for both mother and child, involving pain management, monitoring for any signs of infection, and support with initial breastfeeding and bonding. Throughout this entire process, the roles of the healthcare team are pivotal. From the surgeons to the nurses, from the anesthesiologist to the pediatrician, each member plays a vital part in ensuring the procedure's success. With each step carefully planned and executed, the primary goal is always the safety and health of both mother and child. What can mothers expect after a cesarean section? This question is pivotal as we explore the outcomes and considerations associated with this common surgical procedure. In the immediate aftermath of a cesarean section, mothers may experience discomfort and pain at the incision site, which is typically managed with prescribed pain relief. Initial recovery often involves staying in the hospital for a few days, where healthcare professionals monitor both mother and baby for any signs of complications such as infection or excessive bleeding. The typical recovery period spans about six weeks, during which mothers are advised to avoid heavy lifting and strenuous activities. It's crucial during this time for mothers to have a support system in place to help with household tasks and baby care, allowing them to focus on healing and bonding with their newborn. Breastfeeding after a cesarean can sometimes be challenging. Mothers might need additional support and positioning techniques to ensure comfort and effectiveness. Lactation consultants can play a vital role in facilitating a positive breastfeeding experience. On a longer-term basis, mothers who have undergone a cesarean section may face certain risks in future pregnancies, such as the potential for uterine rupture or placental complications. It's important for women to discuss these risks with their healthcare providers when considering future childbirth plans. For the babies, while many are born healthy following a cesarean, some may experience transient tachypnea, a condition marked by abnormally fast breathing during the first few days after birth. This typically resolves on its own, but it is closely monitored by healthcare professionals. Complications, while relatively rare, can include surgical infections, reactions to anesthesia, and blood clots. Adhering to post-operative care guidelines and attending follow-up appointments are crucial steps in mitigating these risks. In conclusion, while the journey through recovery after a cesarean section can be demanding, with the right care and support, most women and their babies can expect to do very well. Every surgical procedure has its risks and benefits, and cesarean sections are no exception. Let's debunk some common myths about cesarean sections. One prevalent misconception is the saying, once a cesarean, always a cesarean. This isn't necessarily true. Many women are candidates for vaginal birth after cesarean also known as VBAC. The decision depends on various factors, including the type of incision made and the overall health of the mother during subsequent pregnancies. Another myth is that cesarean sections are the easy way out. This couldn't be further from the truth. A cesarean is a major abdominal surgery that carries significant risks, such as infections, blood loss, and longer recovery periods compared to vaginal births. It's a procedure often performed when the safety of the mother or baby is at risk. Furthermore, some believe that C-sections can prevent future childbirth complications. However, each delivery method has its own risks and potential complications, and the choice of delivery method should be based on medical advice tailored to each individual case. Armed with facts, expectant parents can make informed decisions about their childbirth options. 
To wrap up our exploration of cesarean sections, let's revisit the essential insights. Cesarean sections, often necessary for the safety of mother and child, are performed for various reasons including health risks and complications during labor. The procedure itself is well-defined, involving surgical techniques that ensure the well-being of both mother and baby. Outcomes can vary, but with proper care, most lead to healthy recoveries. Understanding these aspects is crucial for anticipating needs and making proactive healthcare choices. Remember, knowledge is key in making informed healthcare decisions. Stay educated, stay prepared, and ensure the best care for both mother and baby.